Um, I'm John Noggle. I'm working with Enterprise Works Vita, and we're working with Practica Foundation and UNICEF to promote manual drilling in Africa. You might wonder what manual drilling is. Well, manual drilling produces a product that's identical to a machine drilled well, but a, a small fraction of the cost. Manual drilling uses locally made tools and trained businesses to install wells to depths of up to 60 meters in certain soil conditions. The manual drilling process uses a number of techniques, um, augers, um, what do you want to do? <laughs> Rotor sludge. Rotor sludge. Uh, jetting. Jetting and uh, manual percussion. And what are the differences between those techniques? Uh, the differences are based on the types of soils that they can go through and the depths. Uh, augering is limited to about 15 meters. Uh, manual percussion can go to very deep depths but takes a lot of time and is a very slow process. Jetting and uh, rotor sludge can go to about 30 meters easily and uh, in certain conditions uh, deeper. The Why are you not using those big machines? They can do the same trick. The big machines are a huge capital investment and it's very difficult to scale up the number of wells that we can dr drill in Africa by promoting mechanized drilling. It's just a much larger capital cost than anyone can afford. But it, can you always do manual drilling then? No, manual drilling is limited to unconsolidated soils and to relatively shallow depths. But where manual drilling is possible, it's much cheaper. And what do you mean with much cheaper? How, for how much can you drill a well? Well, it all depends, like any type of well, on the depth and the conditions. But they're generally six times cheaper than a machine drilled well in the same location. That is impressive. John, can you tell me a little bit more about the advantages of manual drilling? Yes, well, manual drilling can reach much more remote locations. The tools are much lighter. Uh, they can be made locally for under $3,000. They're ready to go in emergencies. You can move, mobilize teams very, very quickly. Uh, it creates jobs. Uh, one of the big problems in many developing countries is we have young people that have no skills, no profession. This gives them a job opportunity. The, the knowledge stays in the country, especially if you train local enterprises to do it. Uh, this is a real advantage uh, because skills that are gained in manual drilling can apply to other sectors as well. Why is it not happening everywhere in the world yet? That's a good question. I think that in many cases the, the technologies have been tried uh, but they've always been kept inside NGOs or inside government, and they've never been pushed into the private sector. Uh, in some countries, Chad is an example, Niger, they've moved into the private sector spontaneously, but in many countries, they're just not uh, ever been pushed into the private sector. So what does this partnership want to do about it? This partnership wants to raise awareness of the potential impacts and also to produce the materials necessary to help countries uh, promote the professionalization of the drilling sector within their country. So there's a whole toolkit that's being developed, technical manuals, procedural manuals, marketing manuals, uh, all sorts of the implementation package to allow a country that's interested in manual drilling to be able to develop the sector. So who can, if a country is interested or if an organization is interested, who can they contact to know more about manual drilling? They can contact any one of the three partners, Practica Foundation, UNICEF, or Enterprise Works Vita. Okay, thank you very much, John. You're very welcome. Good talking to you. <laughs>